Question number two from the P3 specimen paper for the international A level. Um, it says, using the identity for cosine A plus or minus B, prove that cosine 2A is identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared A. So we need to use the identity for this, which you should know, but in case you don't know, it's on the formula sheet. And this is what you see on the formula sheet. Okay, so basically you've got cosine of A, um, 2a. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let's let's call that cosine of a plus a. Okay, that gives you cosine 2a, right? Cosine 2a is the same as cosine of a plus a. And if we use this um, formula over here, we can say that that's going to be cosine a times cosine a. Okay, and if there's a plus here, this will be a minus, minus, and you'll have sine a, sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. The first angle is a, the second angle is also a. So it's sine a times sine a. So that gives you cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Okay, minus sine squared a. Let me make that a bit neater. Minus sine squared a. Now, uh, we have to express it as one minus two sine squared a. So we can say that that is um, we need to convert the cosine squareds into the sine squared. So we know the identity that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of an angle is equal to 1. So we can replace the cosine squared A with 1 minus sine squared A. So this will be 1 minus sine squared A minus another sine squared A, which gives us 1 minus 2 sine squared A. Now this is a formula that people normally quote because they've memorized it straight away but when you have a question which says prove okay then you have to be very careful to show your steps very clearly to show the steps very clearly to show how you get from one step to the other um, it's very very important for you to do that so that's cosine 2a is identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared a okay so be very careful to show your steps step by step clearly and don't skip anything out, especially when they told you to show something is equal to something else. Uh, you know, the steps must be shown. Okay, that's part A. And part B says, hence, meaning using what we just did here, find using calculus the exact value of the integral of 3 sine squared 2x with respect to x. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to change this into a form that we can integrate with respect to x. I cannot, cannot uh, um, integrate some sine squared or something, okay, directly. Um, I have to rearrange it into a form where it's an angle, but it's, it's, it's not, not expressed as a, the, the squared angle. So here we can change it into something which has got something to do with cosine 2x. So I know that um, if I use this, what we just, proved, I know that the cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. If I rearrange this to make sine squared x the subject of the formula, I'll have 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine 2x. So I'll have sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. So what I can do now is I can replace the sine squared 2x with 1 minus cosine, okay, the sine squared 2x with 1 minus cosine 4x, you see. Uh, what you have to be careful about here is this is a single angle, that's a double angle. So therefore, the sine squared of 2x will be 1 minus the cosine of 4x over 2. Okay, so if you, if you notice the link between the, those two, okay, this is the double angle of that. Okay, so the sine squared of 2x will be 1 minus cosine of 4x over 2. So the sine squared of an angle is 1 minus cosine of 2 times that same angle over 2. So the sine squared of 2x is 1 minus, uh, 1 minus cosine times 2 times 2x, which is 4x over 2. So you've got to be careful about that. So now I'm going to replace inside this, I have 0 and pi over 4. I have 3 times 1 minus cosine 4x over 2 and I have to integrate this with respect to x between those limits. 
Okay, so I'll end up here with 0 and pi over 4. This is going to be 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 cosine 4x dx. I mean, you could leave it like that. I personally like to do this. I like to take out this, but you've got to be very careful that you don't forget about it at the end. Okay, so this is like 1 minus cosine 4x integrated with respect to x. Uh, so now once you integrate, we don't write the integral sign. So the integral of 1 with respect to x is x. The integral of cosine 4x with respect to x is going to be, well, how do you integrate cosine x? It becomes sine x. The differential of sine x is cosine x. Therefore, the integral of cosine x is um, sine x. Okay, so it's, it doesn't, it's not positive. I mean, so it's not negative, it's positive. So of course, the integral of cosine x is positive sine x, so this becomes sine of 4x, but we have to divide it by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 4. And then we put in these values. So when you integrate the cosine of an angle, it becomes a sine of an angle. But then if there's a function inside the function, inside the function there, you have to divide by the differential of that. So I'm dividing by the, dif the differential of 4x, which is 4. Okay, so now we can put the values in. So you're going to have 3 over 2 here. You're going to have, I'm going to substitute these values. So I have pi over 4 minus the sine of 4 times pi over 4, which is pi over 4. That's when you put uh, pi over 4 in there. And now when you put 0 in there, I'll have 0 minus the sine of 4 times 0 over 4. Now, it's important that you do substitute into both of these because sometimes when you substitute 0 into something, you think it's going to become 0. In this case, it does. But for example, if it was cosine x or if it was e to the power of something, e to the power of x, it wouldn't become 0. So don't just think that the 0 substituted into, into the second part will always become 0. It won't. In this case, it will, but not always. A lot of people mis make mistakes like that. So now you have 3 over 2 times, now this does become 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. So you have pi over 4 minus, now the sine of pi is 0. Okay, so the sine of pi is at 0, so that becomes 0. So you end up with 3 pi over 8. And it, uh, let me write that a bit neater than that. 3 pi over 8. And the question, if you look above, it tells us the exact value, so you leave your answer in this form, okay? This is the answer in its exact form, okay? Do not round it to 3SF because it's asking us for the exact value, means in terms of pi. And there we have the answer for question number 2A and B.